welcome to Valley Sports Rewind. I'm Mike Kenichi, and we are joined again, and this is part two of our interview now with former Derby Cross Country coach Joe Mazzanti. And uh, Coach, thank you for coming back on again. It's a real pleasure. Oh, thank you for having me, Mike. We appreciate it. So, Coach, I think where we let off last time, we got into your first year as coach of um, the cross country team. You were able to talk about some of the players you coached, but we didn't really get to spend a lot of time on some of the teams. So, Kind of, you know, we talked about that first team and, you know, how they did. Talk to me about year after year one. How did you feel about the program and did you think, you know, the girls program would continue to grow? Yeah, you know, that, that first year, Mike, was, um, it, you know, it went well. Uh, going into that right. year, we weren't sure what was going to happen. I thought that we could develop a, a good program. But that first year under your belt was so important, and we had a lot of things going our way. Um, we had a great group of seniors that year, including Sharon Miller, who was the captain. So, you know, we going into year two, um, we were cautiously optimistic that that maybe we could we could start a winning tradition uh, of some sort, whether that be by record or whether that be by um, our, our placing in the in the state meets and so forth. So we were cautiously optimistic. Right. You know, Coach, I think anybody that coaches a program in any level of a sporting event, there's always that thing in the back of their mind that someday they like to win a championship. But in Derby at the time, realistically, the numbers weren't there. So tell me, what did you? What was your biggest goal for this girls program? Like, I mean, did you want to win a championship someday or was the goal to just make it a program? Yeah, I mean, you know, ultimately, that, that's sort of the ultimate goal is to try to win a Class S championship, right? Um, or a Who's Tonic League championship. But the the Hoosy was was pretty strong in right. cross country, and you know, you had teams like Amity and Cheshire, and realistically, uh, unless um, some very fortunate things happen, um, you know, it's just not realistic. Uh, Class S meet, you know, on a similar vein, there, there were. Two teams in particular in that era, Mike, that were just dominant in Class S, um, Lyman Memorial and Litchfield. They were 1-2 right. for like four or five years in a row. And they both had middle school programs. In fact, uh, Litchfield started running, I think, in fifth grade or something. So, um, so you know, we did not have a middle school program. We had it for one year in 1991. Right. Uh, um, and that was it. Um, and at that time the girls didn't run track either because most of them played basketball and softball. Right. So realistically, um, you know, I, I didn't think we would, no. What I was hoping to accomplish was to get some winning seasons um, for the program and, and, and to do as well as we could in, in both the Hoosie and in Class S. Uh, right. Yep. And, you know, you talked about getting some winning seasons. And I believe in year two, you would have a winning season. And it was a very good year for the girls. So talk about the, what was that, the 89-90 season? Yeah, it was the 89 team. Yeah. Right, 89, because there was no 90, right? Right, That's right. 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 Well, there was a 90, but that would be the following, right, <laughs> the right, following year. Right, right, um, right. Yeah, and, and actually both teams were, were very good. The 89 team, um, you know, we had uh, a very strong one-two punch in Lauren Anicelli and Sherry St. Jakes. Right. Um, you know, they would typically, and this is true of the whole team, um, but Lauren and, and Sherry did it, just exemplified this. We, we had three pillars, really, that we were trying to build the program on. Um, one is to train harder than most of our opponents. Right. Um, within reason. Now, it was still a relatively new program, so we couldn't go crazy, but we, we trained hard, and the kids worked very hard. Right. Um, the second thing was... Um, you know, we wanted to train smarter than than most of our opponents, and that was based on the whole scientific principles that we talked about in the last show. Right. Trying to peak on time for the Class S championship every year. Uh, and the third one is racing smart. And, and this is really, I think, what set set us apart from, from many of our opponents, Mike. We... Uh, the one thing, so many teams at the start of races, and it's true now, it was true 30 years ago, it'll probably be true 30 years from now. Right. They go out way, way too hard. Um, right. So they think if you're 30th at the mile mark and 30th at the two-mile mark and 30th at the, at the finish, that you've run you know, an even race. No, you've probably run a fastest. The first mile was probably your fastest. The second mile a little slower and the third mile even slower than that. 
what you need to do is to run an even pace or an even effort through the whole thing, ideally. That's the most efficient way to run. And, and what these girls did, I mean, they were so disciplined, um, they were able to do that. So typically, you know, you would see Lauren and Sherry um, at the half mile mark, say at an invitational, and they might be, you know, 45th and 50th or something. Right. Um, they would move up, you know, maybe the mile mark, they moved up to, say, 35th, uh, halfway through, maybe 30th, the two mile mark, maybe 20, 25, and then they would finish, say, 15th. I mean, and it's not that they ran that much faster at the end, but they were able to maintain an even pace or an even effort through the whole thing. That's the most efficient way to run, and it, it can make a big difference when you have a, a groups of runners at about the same ability. Um, we maximized our potential. So they did that to a T. Um, as did the other girls on the team that year, right. uh, girls like April Mermina, uh, Christy Froley, Heather Kovacs, right. um, Kelly Byram, Holly Coomer. I mean, uh, Melissa Jupin ran that year right. as a freshman, and uh, Audra Cook was one of our captains that year. Right. And, um, uh, th- and Audra was a great captain as well. So, so that's kind of how we set the table for the season, and... Um, a couple of things come to mind that year. I would say a big meet against Seymour. Right. Uh, early on, Joe Frager was the Seymour coach. Yes. Um, yeah. People know him uh, more as a girls basketball coach, and he went out to Southern and, uh, and now Fairfield. But he, um, but he was a good cross-country coach, too, and we would talk, you know, the week before the meet and kind of, you know, go over back and forth what we thought was going to happen. Right, it was a friendly, right. very friendly rivalry, you know. And, uh, well, anyway, it was a home, home meet, and I think Seymour must have, they had one runner or something who was out, and maybe one runner who was sick, or s- something like that. Um, anyway, we beat Seymour, and that was a big win. Right. Um, and the reason is, the, the two teams in the Housatonic League, Amity and Cheshire, nobody was going to stop them, but then you had the Valley schools that were in the next tier, and we felt if we could beat Seymour, maybe we got a shot at Shelton. And, and we'd be in a fight maybe for third place, ideally. Right. And, uh, well, as, as luck would have it, we would lose to Shelton by three points. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> but fortunately, Seymour would beat Shelton. So at the end of the year, we were all six and three um, in the right. Housatonic League. It was a three-way tie. So w- we get to the Housatonic League meet at the end of the year. Uh, it doesn't count for the standings, but everybody's keeping track, you know. And um, it, it, was, it was a great race. We beat Seymour by one, and we beat Shelton by two. Wow. And uh, so we edged them out, and uh, it was a great way uh, to, to build some momentum going into the state meet that year. Right, and plus those are the Valley rivals, too. So, yep. you know, you could say you were the king of the, or the queens of the Valley that year. So, I mean, that, that's important as well. Um, you know, one of the things, too, about you, Coach, that – you know, was interesting is you, you know, you were good with the kids and stuff, but you, you know, you, you held them accountable for things. And, you know, if you didn't follow the rules that you placed for them, they weren't going to be able to run. And basically that your mindset was, I'm teaching you for everyday life. Cor- correct. I mean, to be responsible and to be committed. I, I, yeah, that's, that's certainly one of the things. Sure. You know, cross country or any sport for that matter, Mike is, I mean, it, in some ways, it's an end in itself, but it's also a means to an end. Right. And and you want to develop those things. You want to develop a sense of teamwork, of of self discipline, of um, bouncing back from adversity, um, which will come into play the following year. We can talk a little bit about that. But um, but yeah, no, I was I was pretty tough. I I um, you know I tried to be flexible when when we needed to be flexible. You know, kids were involved in a lot of activity, so sometimes. Right. You know, they would be a little bit late to practice because they were doing something else. So you, you try to work with those things. But, um, but in terms of, of coming to practice, you know, yeah, we had some rules. And right. uh, we had to follow the rules. And most of the kids did. There were a few exceptions here and there. But by and large, they did. Right. Now, let me just ask you this, and we won't spend too much time on it. But mm-hmm. as far as track went, when it rained, you had the option to practice in the school. But track's a lot different than cross country because you're not running as much distance. Was it very hard when it rained for you guys to run indoors and be able to get the type of workout you wanted with the girls? 
Yeah, we, we tried to avoid that as much as possible. Um, right. Only in exceptional cases would we run indoors. Um, you know, and le- I mean, you know, if there was a thunder and lightning storm, obviously we wouldn't go out and run in that. Um, but or if it rained, you took a, you let him go out. Let him go out, and, unless it was just an absolute downpour where it became a, right. a danger. You know, uh, yeah, oh yeah, we ran in anything. Like I say, we, we, the joke used to be in cross country, we'd run in anything, rain, snow, nuclear war, it wouldn't matter. You know, we'd, <laughs> right. we'd go out there, but uh, but yeah, running indoors, it's just hard. It's hard on the knees because you're running, um, you yeah. know, on the on the floor. Uh, you can do in the gym a little bit, but. Or the it's auditorium. not the same. It's though. not the same. No, right. No. So let's talk about. Um, before I get to the ninety team, let yep. me ask you this: A lot of the kids had different activities. Some played multiple sports. But for the girls that only ran cross country, were you big on them running track? Did you make it a point that they should run track as well to stay fresh? Well, it, it was very tough in the beginning, Mike, because um, as I say, most of the girls were playing softball. Right. Um, so, you know, it wasn't the type of thing that I, because with, with many of the girls, softball was their number one sport. It was the thing that they had been doing since they were kids, you know. Right. So I, I couldn't very well come in and say, okay, <laughs> we're right. going to stop all that and we're going to run. Um, so what I basically told them was, you know, you should do something in the spring. Uh, if you want to play softball, great. You know, if, right. if you're not, then we encourage the kids to run track. And over time, there were more more kids that started running track, but in the early years, no, it, it was mostly all softball, um, and that was okay. It was it, listen in the long run for us to be at the at the top of our game to be a contender for the state championship. You, you need a middle school team and you need a track team, right? And, and probably an indoor track team and basically running year round. We just didn't have that, um, right? In retrospect, I mean, if, if we did. Um, I think the 89 and 90 teams, and it's speculation, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that we would, I don't know if we would have won the class S championship, but we would have been contending for it. It would have been, we would have been right in the thick of it. And, um, right. Uh, but you know, you, you do the best with what you have at the time. Right. So the 1990 team, um, that was a big year as well for the girls, and I think they had a better record than the 89 team, correct? Uh, no, actually, well, let me just go back one thing. The, in the Class S meet in 89, we, we came in sixth that year, right? Um, which was a little better than the year before. Um, we, we did well. Um, interestingly, both in 89 and 90, the Class S division was loaded. We had, like I said, Lyman and, and Litchfield were right, outstanding. Right. Then in, in 89, you had um, Northwest Catholic, which right. moved down from double S the year before, and they qualified for the state open the year before as a double S team, right. um, as they did in 89, I believe. Um, and then you had a Kagenchag, which was a double S team that had moved down. Right. And a good one. They were sixth, I think, the year before. Um, and then you had Griswold, which was fifth. Now, right. Mike, Griswold had beaten us at the Wickham Park Invitational by 159 points, and that was three oh, weeks wow. Yep, right. before the state championship. The day of the Class S meet, they beat us by four. Wow. So that's how much we improved. Um, and that's when you know that it, you know it was a successful year because you don't always go by the wins and losses; you go by how they improved, and that's you know hundred and you know they improved it by a hundred and forty four you know points, whatever it is, forty five yep. points. Yep. So that's pretty impressive. It was, and and it wasn't just a fluke because Portland, who beat us by three points at the Coggenchag Invitational that year. Um, we beat them in the Class S meet by about 70-something points. Um, so we definitely peaked on time, and, and the girls were great. Lauren would end up as um, a second-team All-Hoosie, right. All-Valley, and just missed All-Class S. Um, she was 12th, which was outstanding considering she only ran two full years. Um, right. So that was great. And Cherry was 19th, so uh, she was All-Valley. So uh, it was a great year. So... So that was sort of the momentum we were building and and going into the 1990 season. Right. Uh, 1990, Mike, was truly the tale of two seasons, and and I'm not exaggerating this. Um, Early on, we we felt that we would be fairly strong in 90. 
Uh, we lost our one-two punch. Right. But we had, you know, just about everybody else back. And we had a couple of good freshmen coming up. So um, we were pretty pretty sure we'd, we'd do well. Early on, though, we went first meet, we went to Immaculate. And we had a uh, quad meet with Immaculate, Barlow, and Massick. And we... We th- I thought we would come away with at least one win, if not two, right. maybe three. We went 0-3, um, right. which was disappointing. And then we had Wyndham, and we did okay there. We had the O'Brien Invitational, and we did okay there. But then we had another meet with Seymour again, and yeah. this time it was at their place. Well, the things that happened to them the year before happened to us. We had, um, unfortunately, had uh, you know, a couple of girls who were dealing with injuries and illnesses and those kinds of things. Well, they ended up, ended up beating us, uh, I think, seven, eight points, something like that. And um, so now we're, we're two and five coming out of the Seymour meet. And I got to tell you, that was a tough one because if we were going to do anything in the league that year, we had to beat Seymour. Right. Um, we didn't. And it was, it was disappointing. And not only that. Not only were we dealing with injuries and illnesses, there were a couple of girls who were having trouble. They would tell me they were having trouble with, with some of their schoolwork, that they were falling behind in their grades and were thinking about quitting because they just were having such a hard time. Now, this was only a few weeks into the school year, but nevertheless, they were concerned. So, right. so the next day, we had uh, a team meeting, and we talked about what had just happened. Um, one of the things that we started immediately that next week was having a study period twice a week immediately after school for about 45 minutes. Right. And, um, and that seemed to do wonders because I, with one exception, we really didn't have uh, problems with that the rest of the year. So one of the things is they get home and they're tired. It's a long day. Right. So it's hard after practice to do that. And um, so we figured this would be a good way to, to sort of prevent that from happening, any problems. So we had a meeting and basically said, look, what happened happened. We're off to a slow start. Forget about it. We can't change it. It's a new season. And right. we've, we've got to focus on what's coming up and, and focus on October. And uh, so we did. And, um, you know, next couple of races, we, we went to, we had a, a meet uh, against Amity, Cheshire, Hamden. We, we got trying. I mean, so we're three and nine at this point. Oh, wow. So I, I'm ready. You know, I, I remember talking to Joe DiMartino, you know, and he's kind of t- talking to me off the ledge. I mean, it, it was, <laughs> and Joey was the, the softball coach, of course. Right. And uh, um, so I'm thinking, what, what's going on? So finally, though, we started turning it around. We had a meet the following week against two who's a tonic league opponents who were. You know, not that strong, but we had to beat them, and we did. Uh, we went to the Wickham Park Invitational, and we ran well, reasonably well. Right. Um, we then uh, had a big home meet, and this is where we really turned it around. We had a home meet against seven opponents, including Shelton, Lyman Hall, St. Joe's, Naugatuck, who's a tonic valley. I mean, it was a whole bunch of teams. The girls ended up beating six of the seven opponents. Oh, wow. Um, the only loss was to Shelton, which always stings a little bit. They beat us by three again. Right. Um, but we beat everybody else, and I'm looking at the times, and I'm thinking, okay, I think, I think we've turned the corner. We're back. Because now we pulled out, we clinched a, a winning season at 11 and 10. Right. And uh, going from 3 and 9 to 11 and 10, I wasn't very confident that was going to happen at, at that point, but, but the girls really pulled through. So one of the highlights, Mike, and this is one of the highlights, I think, of our program, came the following week in the New Haven County meet. Um, we're, you know, the New Haven County meet featured some of the best teams in, in the whole area. I mean, you had the, the Hoosie teams, you had the district league teams, you had some, a couple of teams from the Shoreline, the NVL, the central part of Connecticut. Uh, it was just a, a very strong race. We're the only Class S school going in. Little Derby, you know, going up against all these big giants. Right, you know? right. And, um, I, and I, the year before, we had come in eighth, and the top six, of course, get plaques. And um, so this year, I'm thinking, geez, if we could get eighth again, I'll be happy because you know, to be where we were last year is, is pretty good. Right. Well, it was a cloudy day. It was like showery. It was kind of rainy. And somehow, some way, 
I, I still don't know how we did it. But we, th- these girls came through and came in fifth. Wow. And, you know, it, Cheshire, which is a state power every year, they were fourth. So we wow. were one spot behind Cheshire. And um, it was amazing. April Mermina came in 18th out of, like, I don't know, 107 runners, and she missed all county by three spots. Right. Um, but they all did. Christy Froley, Kelly Byram, uh, Heather Kovacs, Holly Coomer, and then Sarah Stonaha and Robin Mermina were our two freshmen that year, and they were running well. Right. So it, it was just a great feeling. So after the race, um, we have a little – they usually have an award ceremony, but it was raining, so – we couldn't couldn't do it there, so they gave the coaches the plaques and the awards, you know. So I didn't say anything, and we're on the way to the bus ride home, and didn't really say anything, just sort of, you know, nonchalant. We get back, we have our little team meeting, and finally, um, I tell them, I said, "Well, look, you know, last year we came in eighth, and you know, I told you I'd be happy if we got eighth this year, and well, we did. Um, in fact, <laughs> right. we came in fifth. Then, of course, there." ecstatic um, right and then we had medals for the for the varsity runners and the top seven and so for the next couple of days they came in to school they they'd come into practice they'd be wearing their medals and um i remember holly coomer she was only a sophomore right and uh you know i think the medal weighed more than her you know it was <laughs> so, right but it was it was cute i mean they they, they were just um so um uh, enthusiastic at that point that the whole season by then had really turned around and it was just a great moment and um, one that I'll always remember um, so so anyway so we get through the county get to the Hoosie uh, we come in fourth in the Hoosie wow which was a little yeah. better than we did during the regular season right so, so that was good uh, beat Seymour again uh, which was important <laughs> right and uh, so you know we get to this uh, well we get to the week of the state meet and uh we had a little tradition, usually the week of the state meet. I, I did different things to try to get the kids to focus, to kind of relax a little bit and not get so uptight about the, the meet because it's the biggest race of the year, the state meet, and everybody's a little nervous, and you kind of do things to try to, you know, break the tension a little bit. So we had a little, we had like a, a movie night where we watched a running sort of focused movie, and the movie was, was, it was interesting in that, it's a long story, but you had... The, these, a whole group of runners. There was this one runner who um, they weren't going to let run the race because right. he, was, he was, had done something to the running establishment where he uh, talked about prize money and people taking money under the table and, and he was defending runners and all this. Well, anyway, they're trying to stop him from running the race, literally, like stop him in the race. From right. Running. So they get to the end and they're still after him and they're trying to stop him. And all of a sudden, this whole group of runners, uh, they all join hands and, and they finish the race together as sort of a sign of unity. They were with this guy. Right. Well, two days later, two days before the state meet, we're running a two mile workout in the 2 2. And um, so they're coming back and it's an easy day. And the first group of runners were like three or four that came in. And then it was like a group of, I don't know, six or seven of our kids. And I see them, and they're all, like, joined hands, like, running the last, you know, 100 yards. I'm thinking, what are they doing? And, uh, and then it hit me. I'm like, oh, yeah, they got it. They right. get it. They saw them, yeah. They saw it. And then they're telling me that they ran the whole, um, almost the whole way like that. And I'm thinking, it's a good thing I didn't know that because all I could think of is one trips, and then they all go down, and it would be a disaster, you know. Right. But it was, but it was yeah, they got it, and it was a sign of team unity, um and also it showed that you were reaching them you know that they were buying into you and that had to you know make you feel good as well well you know it, it, it's it's important that i was glad that they they got the message you know the, the right. lesson of the day so to speak you know and um and i think because the team went through so much and so much adversity early on that it, it ironically brought the team closer by the end of the year um and we went, you know, we went into the state meet, Mike, and we took, and it was a great day. Mike Angelini, the principal at the time, was there. Right. Um, I think Ken Marcuccio was there as the athletic director. Um, anyway, we come in fifth. And wow, that would be the best the team ever did uh, for almost a quarter of a century. Um, it wasn't until 2014 right. that that was broken. Um, 
but it was it was a great day and uh um you know Kelly Byram that year she was one of our captains she ended up running finishing 26th and that compared with I don't know 60s or 70s the year before um she improved by leaps and bounds in fact probably one of the greatest one year improvements that I've seen uh as a coach I mean she just I, I don't know she just had the eye of the tiger that year I think but right um and Heather Kovacs was a great captain. Yeah. She was like the big sister to everybody, and, and she was always part of the pack. You know, April, of course, was our number one runner, did a great job. Um, uh, she ended up being All Valley and second team All Hoosie. Right. Um, Christy Froley, um, you know, ran very well. Um, they all did. Holly and, and, and Michelle Green, who had been JV during most of the season, ended up running varsity that day oh, because nice. she was improving right. so much. And she did a nice job. So they, they all did. It was, it was just a great way to end the year. Right. So now 91, was that kind of a down year for you girl, for the girls? Or how did they do 91? Because I, I, if I remember correctly, it was kind of a down year that year, uh, rebuilding year. Well, you know, 91 was, was interesting. We, uh, on one hand, Mike, we, we actually, we, we ended up getting our third consecutive winning season. We went nine and eight. Right. So it, it was successful in, in that regard. Um, and we had, you know, had our moments. We, we did some good things and, um, uh, I, I think we were eighth in the county that year. I'd have to look it up, but uh, we were competitive, competitive in the Hoosie, competitive in New Haven County. Um, so we did very well. But it, it, when we got to the state meet, we just couldn't put. Um, we we had the most depth that we ever had with nine runners that year. Nine legit. Well, we had more than nine runners, but nine runners who were legitimately varsity caliber runners. Right. Um. But we just, for whatever reason, couldn't get, you know, five or six or seven runners on the same day, all all in sync, all running. At, right, at, right. And I don't know what it was. It was just, a, it was a strange year in that regard. We had some success. We we won a home meet in October where we, we went 5-0, and oh, again, on our home course. Um, and by the way, our home course, for, for people who don't know, and, and I think you're familiar with it, but the... It includes, um, it's a, it was a 3.1 mile course. And the boys, were, of course, were running 3.1. The right. girls in most places were running between 2.2 and 2.6. The state meets were 2.5. Um, almost nobody else ran a 3.1 home course, but we did. And it included the softball hill at the midway point and nutmeg hill which is almost the last two tenths of a mile until you go a little bit downhill right right so it's it was teams used to hate our kids i think hated this course but the other teams we would take them through beforehand and they would they would just you could hear them it was actually like almost hysterical laughter on the buses because they couldn't believe they were going to have to run these hills right and our kids were used to it and it definitely played uh, an important role in, in right. how well the team did. And um, so we were, we were very happy with that. Right. So now, Coach, an interesting thing happened in 92. Derby was going through a lot of issues with the budget and stuff. They eliminated a lot of coaches. And fate would just have it that Gene Warren decided to go to Shelton. I think he took, he, he, he took an assistant coach job at least in track. And I think he became the cross country coach at Shelton. So as fate would have it, that kept you because chances are they decided to combine both boys and girls, correct? Because they just didn't have the money in the budget to have separate coaches. And chances are you would have probably been out as coach because he had had more time, correct? Well, not really. What happened was because of the budget, um, they decided to consolidate the two programs. And so uh, they posted a new position, and it was going to be the boys and girls cross country coach. Right. Um, and we both applied, actually. Um, and I, I, I was. You know, oh, so six, I didn't know that. I thought he had left already. Yeah. No. No. But he, but but he was gracious about it. Um, he, you know, he was teaching in Shelton at the time. Right. And and he would, in fact, he, you know, the first day of practice in '92, um, he came down and he. 
um, you know, said goodbye to, to, to a few of his kids that were still there. Now, there weren't too many because we lost a lot of kids between 91 and 92 on the boys' side. Right. Um, but he, he did, and he, and he, you know, encouraged everybody to, to, um, to, to do their best and, and to, uh, you know, to, to, to work with me and, and, and so forth. So, yeah, he, he was very gracious in, in, uh, in that sort of transition. Um, so, you know, we thanked him for that. And he, and he did. He started coaching in Shelton. I think, I don't know if in 92, if he was the head coach, maybe he was the assistant cross-country coach. He but was He was definitely w- the assistant, or he might have been the head coach in track. That's possible. Right, but I, I think he was an assistant in one and the head in the other. In the other. That, that's very possible, yeah. And then eventually he would become, you know, the, the head coach over there. But, uh, um, so yeah, so it was, it was a little, you know, it was a little, it was a little tough, but we, you know, we got through it. Right. So talk to me about that because now you're the coach of both boys and girls. Number one, was that difficult that first year because you're trying to, you know, focus on both, you know, boys and girls. And number two, you mentioned the numbers weren't there. You didn't have a lot of boys. So you kind of knew the boys were basically, it was going to be an individual goal. It wasn't going to be a team goal that year. Right. Um, yeah, the boys team, I, I knew, and I told them from day one practically that, you know, this is going to be a rebuilding year. We're going to take our lumps early on. And and what we're going to try to do is rebuild the program um, so that by the end of the year we'll, we'll be more competitive and then hopefully over time we're going to rebuild the program to where – it used to be at least somewhat. Right. And um, so that was the goal. We only had two runners back from the 91 team, um, Eddie Solis and uh, Bill Ronsky. Um, right. And, uh, but then we got, you know, we got Jamie Turbeville, who the kids literally saw him walking home one day from school and said, hey, you should run cross country. And he's like, okay. And <laughs> he showed up, I think, the next day. Right. And uh, he turned out to be to be a very big part of, of the success of the boys program in the next few years. But yeah. Um, you know, we had Timmy Beers from track. We had Rich right. Froley from, um, he actually, the 91 year was the year we had a middle school team. So Rich and Rich ran that year. So right. he was one of the, and know. Rich was known too, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. he, his parents worked late sometimes, so he didn't always have a ride. So he would just jog from his house sometimes to the field. He was known to do that. So he was in great shape all the time. He was. And in fact, as a freshman, he was our number two runner in 92. Um, right. So he did really well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, and on the girl side, um, you know, it was kind of strange. We were, it was a tough, very, very tough regular season. We were five and 14, Mike. And, um, so I was a little little down about that, but at the same time, um, you know, we were dealing with a who's a tonic league that I don't know what happened those last few years, but all of a sudden the teams that were sort of um, relatively easy, there were a few that we could sort of count on to, to try to be, right. the, they were gone. And, and you know, every team, it was just a brutal, um, brutal race practically. Um, so it was very tough. Uh, but with the girls, we ended up, um, coming in sixth in Class S at the right. end of that season. Now, again, how they did that, um, five and 14 teams do not come in usually in the top six in a class. Right, right. Um, but they pulled it together, and, you know, Christy and, and Holly were seniors that year. Um, you know, Sarah, Sarah Stonaha, right. Penny Weiss, um, yeah. uh, they were juniors. Um, you know, we had... Uh, uh, Sue Boda, who who ran yes, that year, so that's right. Yeah, it was it was um, it was a good group. Marisha Bravo came out; she was a freshman. Um, so they they pulled together and somehow got sixth. I'm still amazed by that. That we did not. I don't know how we did it. I, I just don't know because regular season was brutal. But I think it it goes to the fact that the league was so tough. It, it just it, the competition right. and maybe that helped us in the long run. And you know, Coach, it's funny you brought her up, so I'm gonna. It go into this a little bit but yeah every team once in a while has that one player that's just so hard on themselves and they're never happy you never see him smile because they're just never satisfied and penny weiss was that type of runner she was <laughs> never in a good mood she thought she should have done better even when she did great she was always mad at herself she didn't want anybody telling her she did good because <laughs> in her mind it was never enough she was a very intense runner yeah you know and that, that's an interesting story i um Penny came to us as a sophomore. She actually, as a freshman, ran for Sacred Heart Academy. She was a student right. there. Um, so she came to us in um, in 91 and as a sophomore. 
and yeah, and you know, and 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 yeah. Penny was interesting. She, I mean, she was tough on herself, um, and and she, 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 she could be difficult, you know, in the, in the early years. I mean, it was tough. Um, but I'll tell you, by the time she was a senior, well, she did two things. As a junior, she played a big part in the success of the '92 team. Right. Um, so she was really starting to mature. And then in '93, she um, she became a, a, an outstanding leader for the team um, as a captain, along with Sarah. Right. And I, I, you know, if you would ask me in 91, do you think Penny will become, you know, a really outstanding captain? I, mean, I don't know about that. But, but she, she really matured, and she developed, and I think she started getting more comfortable at Derby High School, and, and things started to gel. And, uh, but what a turnaround. I was so proud of her and the way that, that she developed. And, um, and she'd be, she was a very good runner, and she, you know, she ran track, as you said, as well. And, right. Uh, um, and, and she was good. She was good with the younger kids, you know. And um, So, yeah, she turned out to, to be uh, you know, a, a very good, very good runner, a very good contributor to the team. Right. And, you know, the boys, like you said, it was a rebuilding year. But, you know, let's talk about Ed Solis a little bit because Ed Solis at that time in high school, you know, every team has that one – player that's the best and ed was your best runner by far i mean he was definitely like the guy was like an energizer bunny he could never stop talk about him a little bit oh sure you know ed was um a very dedicated individual who you you never had to discipline you know you never had to tell him twice run hard today you know he he just did it um and he he really improved it was a gradual improvement he went from uh, his freshman year, sophomore year, junior year was a steady, gradual improvement. Right. Uh, should we talk a little bit about senior year? Do you want to get into that now? Or you... Sure. You know, before you do, though, okay. one thing that was very interesting about Ed, too, I had never saw a runner do this in my life. I don't know where he picked it up. He would always look at his shadow when he was running. And, you know, <laughs> he had like these superstitions and he would look at his shadow all the time. I think he was trying to keep up with his shadow or something, but. It, We'd always ask him, Ed, what are you doing? And he's like, looking at my shadow, you know. But he never <laughs> never gave an explanation. So he was unique for sure. He was. He was a quiet kid, you know. And, and I believe he, he you named him captain his junior year, correct? Because he did. was so, you know, important to the program. But, you know, one of, we'll go into it now. But one of the things that if there was a negative about Ed and there weren't any is he was not your typical guy that could do a kick at the end. He wasn't going to sprint and – you never expected that from him, so tell the story. Yeah, you know, and and that was that was sort of the knock on him, you know, that he didn't have you know great speed, and he didn't have a, a kick, you know, to, right. to pass people in, in the last you know quarter mile of a race or so forth. Um, I, but he had the endurance and he had the strength, and so I never got too worried about the kick thing because ninety five percent of your race is is not your kick, you know. Right. Um, but. You would like to develop something so that if you do get into a situation at the end, you, you know you can you can you know beat that last runner at the end that you need to accomplish something. So Eddie, in his senior year, um, was running very well, and he ended up being um, an all who's a tonic division. By now, Mike, we were in the SCC, right? Which was a whole other story. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, now we're running some of the best teams in the state in our league. You know, it was crazy. Um, and we ended up, by the way, ninety four. The boys eight, eight and seven. seven. Yeah, yep. winning season, first winning season for the boys in two years. Yeah, yeah, yep. or maybe even more. Well, than even that. more than that. It was actually, I think, the first winning season since nineteen eighty eight. Right. Um, and we would end up six. Well, we'll, we'll get to that in class us, but, but Eddie, Eddie in the state meet, um, he was, and he did his usual thing, just like a typical derby performance. He gradually moved up, you know, in the pack yeah. throughout the race, let all the other people, do, you know, go out too hard and burn themselves out. So we're in the, the final half mile, and you see him coming out of the woods. There's about 600 yards to go. And, um, and I think he was about 12th or, or thereabout uh, coming out of the woods. So I'm thinking, well... Maybe he could get 10th, you know, maybe, but he's going to have to really kick it in, and, you know, that's not his forte, you know, but, but maybe he could pull it together. So all of a sudden, he takes off, he goes around the turn, the last 300 yards, and he's out sprinting like three or four people, and I'm like, 
where, where did this come from? You know, this was not the Ed Solis that we, we were used to seeing. Right. Mike, I think he, he, he all of the training for four years finally put it all together. Um, keep in mind, at the end of the year now, we're concentrating a little more on speed than we do during most of the year. So we're doing faster sprints and, and uh, uh, focusing on speed. But it all came together that day. And he just the, the guts that he showed um, in that last, you know, three-eighths of a mile, whatever it was, um, is just remarkable. He, right. he came in eighth. He earned all Class S. And it was just a great way to, uh, well, he qualified for the state open, but his next to last race in cross country as a high school runner. Right. Um, and along the way in that year, um, Jamie Turbeville was 16th, Dan Stafiri was 26th. Like we, we took six. Now it was, it was three years in the making. Um, right. we, 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 we went through some tough times, but 94, in some ways, you know, and they're different sports, different, but there's a parallel. You know, we talked a little bit about, I think on, on one of your shows, um, how the 92 football team, um, the goal that year was to try to rebound and bring the team back to a winning season and back to the traditions that it had. Right. It might not have been the best team that, that Derby ever had, but, but we wanted to at least do that and re- rebound from the, la- you know, the previous year. Well, in some ways, it was like that. The 94 cross-country team was kind of like that because we hadn't had a winning season in six years. We hadn't come in sixth in Class S since 87. Um, you know, and, and you know, the last you know, several years, and we were losing seasons. So um, in some ways, we accomplished that. We went eight and seven, and then sixth in Class S. Right. And the top three runners that year, it was the best finish for our top three runners in a state meet since 1978. 1978 was the year the boys missed the Class S championship by three points. So right. um, it, it was a remarkable finish. And, and like I say, and, and Rich and Timmy Beers and Marco Simos and um, uh, John Turbeville and Brian Flaherty. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting somebody. Uh, but... Um, they all did. They all did a great job. It was a good group of kids, and they. It was three years in the making, um, but they did. And and you yeah. know, even the kids along the way um, yeah. did a great job in in ninety two and ninety three to to sort of build the team back. But uh, it, it was a moving experience. Um, it really was. So yeah. You know, Dan Stafari's another one. You know, if he would have just came out his freshman year. I, I think you would even got more out of him as time went on. He did great, and he only ran two years. Just imagine if he ran the other two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dan was was someone who, um, you know, he what he accomplished in two years. He was a hard worker. Um, you know, he and Jamie were um, he would sort of trade off, and and one would beat the other, and one meet, and then the other would beat the other. And um, yeah, had he run four years. You know, and again, Mike, it goes back to, to what we were saying. If we had had a middle school team and, and so forth at that point in time, that's a team, the 94 boys team, that could conceivably have been vying for a, a state championship. A, a little anecdote, in the state meet that year, Coventry was the winner. Their coach, and, and I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I heard him say something in during the race about – Something like, oh, you know, look at Derby, or it was some mention of us because our top three were were, you know, doing very well. Now right. we weren't going to beat Coventry that day. There was no way that was going to happen. But but the fact that we got sort of that recognition, I think, says something about those kids. I mean, it was just um, had we had them for um, you know, four years, let alone you know six or seven, uh, there's no telling what they could have accomplished. Yeah. Right. You know, coach, a lot of people don't realize this, and I don't think your runners realize this either, but when you became the coach of both boys and girls, you also started working for the Connecticut Post. The Sentinel had folded, and your job was very demanding. And trying to coach those three years and juggle it with work was extremely hard for you. I don't think you slept many nights. (laughs) And you made the decision in, I think you probably made it after the season, but you waited till the banquet in June to tell the team you were leaving. Talk about how tough that was for you and how hard it was to walk away. Yeah, it it was very tough, Mike. I had been, you know, coaching uh, in in one capacity 
or another for 13 years now with the program and you know and, and four years before that as a runner on the team so the last 17 years of my life were involved with derby cross country right um yeah, I didn't say much. I, I kind of knew, I, I think, certainly after the 93 season, um, that that was the likelihood. Um, you could kind of see it happening with, with the work schedule. Um, 92, I was still at the Sentinel, but it was in its final days. Right. But 93, yeah, and, and 94 was even tougher. There were some changes at the post that, that made it more difficult with, with editors and so forth. And um. It, it, it became very difficult. So the only, uh, I really didn't tell many people at all. I told Matt Bradshaw, who was my assistant at the time, right? Um, because I wanted him to be ready and to kind of, you know, be at practice as much as he could um, to kind of ease that transition, hoping that he would get the job after I left. Right. Uh, and he did. And he, he did. He, he did a great job for us. And um, he was very helpful during those years. And, um, um, so, yeah, I didn't really say anything. I told Kenny Marcuccio about a week before the banquet. Banquet was in June. Right. And, um, and he, he, he kind of sensed it because I said, I got to talk to you about something. He goes like, you're leaving. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I kind of had that feeling, you know. And, and um, I said, well, and I was telling him, you know, the story. And he, so he was trying to sort of gently talk me out of it, you know, when we were meeting. Right. And I, I said, you know, I just don't want to be one of those coaches that, give 70%, you know, uh, and, and go through the motions. I don't want to be that guy because that's not – he's like, well, you know, but you're 70% is still more than you know, a lot of people. I say, yeah, but I'll know. I'll know the difference. And if it comes down to it and we lose because of something I did, I, I, that's, I just couldn't deal with that. So, so we go into the banquet, and uh, we, we talked about the season. We had a slideshow. We did the whole thing. I hadn't said anything yet. I told Sarah and Penny, um, they were, we had a tradition where the seniors from the previous year would come back. Right, right. So I told them, so they knew. Um, so finally, we're at the end of the night, and I had to break the news. And it, it, it took me, it must have taken me, it seemed like an eternity. Right. It probably took me about 10 minutes to get through the, the first couple of sentences of what I was about to say. It was just very... Right. It was an emotional night. I mean, it was just very tough. Um, I, I knew it was time. You know, I, I, I don't think it was the wrong decision. I think it was something that just logistically, and, and I was burned out, Mike, by this time. I, I was, you know, it, it's 13 years, you know, right. year in, year out, and then track, and so I was tired, you know. And, and um, so anyway, I told the team, and... Uh, um, so one of the, one of the, the, the underclassmen says, well, you know, you could have waited one more year, <laughs> you know? And I said, well, I said, yeah, but I said, but you, we could always say that, you know, we would always one more year. And, yeah. I, and I thought about, I mean, I thought maybe I, but then I'm like, but it would, it, it would be almost impossible to do. And I don't think I could have done it justice. Right. And, and I, you know, I thought Matt would do a good job as, as, a, as a coach. And I wanted to keep the tradition going. Um, Matt was one of our runners. Um, I coached him as an assistant. Um, right. And then he helped me as an assistant coach. And so he knew the program. He knew the kids. Right. And so fortunately, um, you know, that summer he was appointed as the as the next coach of the program. How hard, coach, was it after that banquet when you went home? I mean, was it on your mind still? I mean, did it bother you, or were you able to get past it after a couple of days and reflect and say, you know what, at the end of the day, it was a success? It, it, I knew it was the right thing to do at the time, but it, it didn't make it any easier. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I mean, in one sense it was a relief because I knew that was going to be hard. To, to 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 say it was almost harder than doing it in some ways, you know. Right. Um, but I, I knew it was the right thing to do. It was a little strange. I still went to most of the meets the f first few years, and then occasionally after. And uh, there were a few moments where, well, I, the following year, Mike in '95, w the team had just. Uh, I think we were on the bus, we were getting ready to come home, and and um, so what I used to do as a coach is after meets, I would 
do a little rundown of all the kids and what they accomplished um, and, and their improvement and going over the, the key points of the day. And uh, so after one of the races, you know, talking to Matt, and he was like, yeah, why don't you? So I, I went through, <laughs> it wasn't my team anymore, but I still went through each one. So, you know, we still tried to, to help out a little bit. And, um, um, and there were moments where, you know, you'd see the team running, and for a minute you, you think it's your team, and you're like, oh, yeah, they're not. Right. And it wasn't until much later, I remember, oh, maybe five, six, seven years after that, I was at a meet, and I hadn't gone to many meets that year, and I see the kids, and they're in their derby uniforms, and I'm thinking, they probably don't even know who I am. You know, like, it was right. just an odd feeling. Like, yeah. but, uh, but it had to be done. You know, it was, it was the right time. And, right. Uh, now, fast forward, Coach. Yep. In 2000, I want to say 2014 or 2015, mm-hmm. you started returning and getting involved with the program, not necessarily at the practices because your job – you know, doesn't permit it, but you've right. been to all the meets and, you know, you took part in organizing the big banquet for the class S Derby girls champions this past year in 2016. So talk about returning to the program. It must be enjoyable to know that you're back with the program in some capacity. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, um, uh, and, and by the way, Matt, um, you know, although, although he had to deal with some number issues, you know, by the way, in declining enrollment, which made it tough team-wise, but he did coach some outstanding individuals. Um, right. Jeff Rajanelowitz, who would become yes. arguably Derby's third best runner uh, on the boys' side. Um, Ryan Tiernan was all class S. And, of course, Anna Polanski on the girls' side yes. would come in yeah. second uh, two years in a row in class S. So... Um, but yeah, um, and then there was a series, I, I think, uh, of a couple of coaches. And then, um, yeah, the, the program sort of started up again around 2012, 2013 officially. Um, 2014, I was kind of monitoring the team a little bit, seeing how they were right. doing. I said, geez, they're doing pretty well, you know. So I finally, I emailed Nick DeLugo, who's the, the coach of the team, right. uh, along with Jenny Ames, who was one of the middle school coaches, um, and along with Mike Gazzo, who's the head, was the head middle school coach. And uh, so I, I said, geez, congratulations. This is a great season. And, uh, you know, a little congratulatory letter. And, you know, so, um, so Nick and Jenny both responded, like, right away. And... Um, so they're like, oh, you know, you should come to the state meet, you know. And so I, I went to, to uh, went up to the state meet that day, and um, watched them come in second, right, uh, in class S, which was the best ever at that point. They beat the ninety team at that point, you know, right. And I remember after the race, um, they were a little bit down for a while because they thought they had a shot, and they did actually have a shot at winning that year. But I told him, I said, look, girls, you, you just accomplished, I don't think you realize it, but you, you just had the best performance of a Derby High School girls team ever, going back almost 30 years. Right. And, and I said, not only that, I mean, to come in second, you, you were, I think they were 10 and 3 that year in regular right. season. Just an outstanding day. And um, so I, I, think, I, I think they were sort of in better spirits after that, once they realized the magnitude of what they had right. just accomplished. And um, so, yeah, I, I've been since then, I've been following the team. I've been uh, going to most of the meets, um, helping out in, you know, keeping stats, um, uh, you know, sort of, I don't know, sort of like an unofficial consultant, I guess, you know, in some ways, um, uh, helping out the home meets, trying to encourage the kids um, as much as we can, um, you know, and, and, and going to some of the track meets too, you know, uh, right. as well. So um, it's been great fun. And I will say there are a lot of similarities in terms of the kids between, you know, the era that, that I was coaching in now. Um, very disciplined, good kids, good students. Right, right. Um, and, and just very easy to root for. I mean, they're just they're just great. And, and that was... That was like a striking similarity to me. I'm like, wow, this is almost a time time warp, you know, deja vu in some ways. They're more experienced now because they've been running, you know, from the time they were in sixth or seventh grade. Right, right. Um, so that that's one difference. But in many respects, they're very similar. And um, in fact, at our banquet, the, the state championship banquet, right. um, I had asked... Um, some of our, well, the original seven, if they were interested in coming. And we had four of the seven show up, um, Lauren, Cherry, Heather, Kelly, 
Sharon Miller um, was did a, a video. She lives out in Pennsylvania, right. so she did a video congratulatory clip t- for the team that we played. Uh, and the other two girls, I think, would have come. We just couldn't. Lenore uh, Manley moved to uh, Georgia. Right. She, I think she would have been there. And Shelly Cofield, we just couldn't reach in time before the race. I think she probably would have gone, too. So it was just very moving um, to watch everybody there. Um, my kid, they congratulated the new team. It was great. It was just a great moment. Right. And, you know, it's got to be good for you and a great feeling to know that you're a part of it still. You know, whether it's head coach or assistant coach or just, you know, helping out any way you can, you know, you've never really left it behind you, which is great to see. I, you know, it's in your blood, Mike, after a while. <laughs> it's hard to completely, you know, uh, remove yourself from it. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're great kids. They really are. Um, I, and this year it looks like um, it could be a very good season as well. Um, you know, Immaculate is back in Class S, so it'll be the Class... They won Double S last year, so it'll be the Double S champion against the Class S champion this year. Um, but the, the kids are going to be strong. Um, you know, Kylie Rodriguez now is, is going to Central this year. She right. just graduated. Gabby Prizio is at Alabama. Right. Um, but we have um, a, a, a good group, Sabrina Hannock and... Um, um, Oh God! And Nicole Rizzo and Rachel Fleischer and Anna Lee and uh, uh, oh, a whole a whole good group. Cassie, uh, right. Madalino, and um, Skyler and uh, Zoe and Cla- I mean, I, I'm probably forgetting somebody, but but they're good kids. They really are. Right. And anything we could expect in the upcoming season? Any surprises? Anything going on? You know, with the program that we should know about? I know they have the. They do have a running page now on Facebook, which they've added. But any new things we should, you know, look, you know, keep an eye out for. Yeah, you know, I I think um, we, there may be a um, a web page coming up that Derby Running Club is is doing. I got to talk to Rob, right. I, Rob Heider. He's he's the head of the uh, the Derby Running Club as the president, uh, and he's doing a great job with that in terms of fundraising and all that kind of thing. Um, and I try to help out with that as well. I'm not a fundraiser. I don't like asking for money, but I try to help out in other ways. And, um, but yeah, um, I, I think the team could, could, uh, could be very strong this year. Um, you know, the NVL, the last few years, um, Derby has, has won it the last two years in a row. Um, I think Derby's going to be very strong again this year in the NVL. Right. Um, but it'll be an interesting year. Sabrina was second in Class S last year. Right, right. Um, so we'll see how she does this year. I, I think as a freshman, she did that. So um, she's very strong. And, and Nicole Rizzo ended up last year, Mike, when the team won the state championship. I have to tell you, the three veterans on the team, um, Kylie, uh, uh, Nicole, and Rachel, the three of them, we're all struggling health wise in into right. that meet. Yeah. Uh, injuries and illnesses and what they did in the class S championship, that's a whole story unto itself. But they overcame I don't know how they did it. I mean, you know, poor poor Nicole was was it took her about an hour to, to semi recover from the race after and she was right. just sick as a dog and um, Kylie was coming over an injury, coming off an illness. And and Rachel had a bad knee and uh and they still pulled it off. So it, just a gutsy one of the gutsiest performances I've ever seen of any team. Um, it, it's a whole story we could do a whole show on that, but uh, but it was just very heartwarming. Right, Coach. Before we go, um, looking back on everything, what what was the most rewarding thing for you as far as coaching went? What would you if you had to pick one thing? What would it be? Well, I, I think from a, a running standpoint, if you're looking at it from that standpoint, probably that we we were able to get the team to be at their best in the in the Class S championship uh, almost every year. And I did a little statistical comparison with other schools in Class S and in the Hoosie, and we were consistently like four or five times out of six years um, at the top in, in terms of uh, most improvement from the early season to the end of the season. So that was big. But I think more than that, um, you know, I could certainly look at the, the 90 season. 89 and 90 were both tremendous. Right, right. The 94 boys season. Uh, as a head coach, as an assistant coach, I could talk a lot of things too. But, but I think more than all of those things, hopefully, I hope, that, that you know, I was able to help in some way 
um, in, in making um, their lives, you know, it may seem worse at the time with all the, the torturous running that we did, but hopefully help them down the road and um, w- with the discipline and, and uh, being able to bounce back from adversity. If, if I could have helped them a little bit in their lives to be successful, um, I would consider that a success. I, I hope so. I mean, uh, it's it just, you know, just as people, that, that really is even more important than the wins and losses. Uh, those things come and go, you know, um, records right. and so forth. But, the, you know, the, the memories of what you've learned and the relationships that you have with, you know, the teammates with themselves and, and then, you know, with the coaches. And uh, that's really what it's all about. The, the other stuff is important, but it, it's the other stuff that supersedes that. Tom Fay, I remember, told me that one time I, early on when I was an assistant coach. Right. Learned that from him. He was the baseball coach at Derby for a lot of years, and he was right. Well, Coach, you know, it's hard to believe we did part two already. It's hard to believe an hour went by. But, you know, I said this in part one, and I really do mean it. I mean, there's a lot of great people in Derby. And, you know, there's been legends that have come and gone in Derby. And to me, like I said, you're one of the great people to ever come out of Derby. You were great for Derby sports. And, you know, although I know you would never call yourself a legend or anything like that, But as far as Derby goes, to me, you're always a legend, and I want to thank you for coming on today. Oh, well, thank you, Mike. I, um, I, you know, I know I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, but, (laughs) but I, I've, I've loved every minute that I've been involved with, with the Derby program and with Derby High School in general and in the town, and uh, just great, great group of people over the years, runners, coaches, administrators. It's, it's been a pleasure, and, and thank you for having me on. I appreciate that being able to talk about the, the old days and the new days, a little bit of both. Right. Well, you know, it's going to be a great season. I'm sure the girls and boys are both going to do great, and we'll have to have you back on when it gets closer to the States. So thank you again for coming on. Oh, thank you very much, Mike. And that was Coach Joe Mazzanti, former cross-country coach at Derby, and he's back with the program again, and we are glad he is. For Valley Sports Rewind, I'm Mike Kenichi saying goodbye, everyone. <laughs>